We are picking our next guest to tell us a little bit more about Oklahoma's new addition. Bringing on Colin Kennedy of Sooners Illustrated. CK's got me here. CK, I gotta know, how does the new Sooner, Michael Boganowski, fit into this already spectacular Venables defense? Yeah, this is a really exciting and kind of a unique get for Oklahoma, Emily. This is a, a guy, when you look at him, he's ranked as a linebacker. Mm -hmm. You'll see some tape of him as a linebacker. But Oklahoma's going to bring this guy in as a safety, and for good reason. He's versatile. He is a, the type of playmaker that completely wrecks game plans. And I think if you understand the context of a Brent Venables defense, they like those bigger, versatile bodies in the secondary, especially at the safety spot. And I think overall – for Michael Boganowski to have the chance to play the safety position in the SEC for a defensive mind like Brian Venables and to be developed by a coach like Brandon Hall, who did an outstanding job in this recruitment, it ended up being something he just couldn't turn down. I think that his visit earlier in the season really stood out. It was their first game day in Norman, and I was told that Boganowski's younger brother was asking me if they could go to every game. <laughs> it looks like they're going to be a whole lot more here pretty soon, and I think, again, the big takeaway here. If you're an Oklahoma fan, Brandon Hall, Oklahoma safety's coach, there are a lot of big names on this OU staff, mm -hmm. right? From DeMarco Murray, Todd Bates, to Emmett Jones, Jay Bly, Miguel Chavis. But Brandon Hall has become one of the elite coaches on that staff, not just as an actual coach, but as a recruiter, too. And for him to go out and get a guy who, I'll just be honest, it, it felt like a long time behind the scenes, he might end up at Kansas State. OU ends up winning out in the end, and they're going to let this guy go play safety in a really talented secondary. And I'm, I'm excited for little brother, too. He's going to see a lot yeah. more games there. Okay, I'm checking our, our chat right now. I guess I'll just go ahead and ask again to hit that like button if you have not already. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of Boomer Sooner. They are watching, and they are so excited. And I hate to get greedy, but while they're here, they want to know, I mean, who's next? Who are maybe some other targets that OU is uh, aiming for this cycle? It's always on to the next, right? Especially <laughs> with Oklahoma and the way that they're recruiting right now, I wouldn't expect anything less, right? But that's another thing too, Emily, is they are now above that 25 benchmark, which used to be pretty notable. Now there isn't a cap, but you're entering with Boganowski's commitment, pushing yourself to 26 pledges. You're kind of in that scholarship maneuver territory where you have to be somewhat picky about who you're going to take with the remainder of the way. And I think moving forward, First and foremost, it starts with Brent Bricks, right? The offensive tackle out of the state of Iowa. It feels like I talk about this guy, again, every single time I'm on the show. I hope just for the sake of the, the, the trajectory of this recruitment, that stops being the case. And again, it's not a reflection on the player. It's just how crazy this recruitment has been. I mean, Oklahoma, as recently as last week, I was told by sources, they were still fighting with Nebraska heavily. But what I can say that's been a little bit different than the times I've come on here and talked about him, there is a belief that OU has really picked up some momentum over the past week and that we could see a decision from Bricks over the next week or two, maybe even earlier. That being said, I feel like it's really important to know Nebraska has heard all the noise. I expect the Huskers to try and counterpunch. But if a decision is actually made over the next week or two, we got to think it's advantage OU. Going from tackle to guard... Eddie Pierre-Louis, I mean, this is a guy out in the state of Florida that Oklahoma really likes as an interior offensive line take. It's kind of a unique one because he could go to the University of Oklahoma from the state of Florida. He could have all the benefits of being at OU as an offensive lineman, the, the coaching from Bill Beanbow, the track record of development, the offensive structure, so on and so forth. But on top of that, because of OU's move to the SEC, he would get all the perks of being an offensive lineman at OU while being able to play games in familiar territory as a Southeast guy. So I, I think Oklahoma, this is another one that they feel like they've picked up a lot of momentum with. And, and Steve Wolfong has mentioned Oregon has tried to get this guy on campus. UCF continues to be a factor. And then Gabby Arudia inside the U feels like we're on a phone call every other week. And, and this is one that Miami too is monitoring from a distance. But I think again, if a decision from Eddie Pierre of the week comes over the next week or two, I think it's advantage Oklahoma again. And then to round it out, because it is relevant with Michael Boganowski announcing with us here on 24-7 Sports, I got to go with Reggie Powers and Cameron Campbell, two defensive backs that OU is targeting and will likely have on campus this weekend. Let me start with Reggie Powers. I, I think this is someone who, I, again, a lot of Oklahoma fans will say, but 
We just got Michael Boganowski. He's a safety too. What does this mean for Reggie Powers? And I'm here to tell you, I don't think it changes much at all, especially since communication has picked up with Reggie Powers and Oklahoma staff. Like, there's a lot of mutual interests here. And I think that OU believes he can play Cheetah for them. He can provide that nickel backer type of versatility that they love. And again, they want guys who can slide all over, and they think he could play up there at the high safety, too, and like some cover three base looks. And so Reggie Powers, to me, is continuing to be a name to know at that safety position, even with Voganowski now being committed. And then Cameron Campbell, cornerback. Look, they have a lot of safety takes and corner takes already. The defensive back class for OU in 2024 is already pretty lengthy, especially with Voganowski in the boat. But this is, again, a guy who you have to expect, especially with a potential visit coming this weekend for the UCF game, more and more interest being shared between OU and Cam Campbell. They want those, those playmaking cornerbacks. They want more depth and playmaking ability in the secondary, and they've already delivered to this point. So who knows? Maybe Cam Campbell is the next one in that long line. I love it. Friend, as always, you are all over it. And thank you for uh, being a part of the show today to give us an update. If you want to see more of Colin's work, check it out at SoonersIllustrated.com. The whole team is tracking everything that is regarding the Oklahoma Sooners.